Welcome, this is Dr. Amanda Rackinson Zapku, and in this tutorial, we are going to examine the SPSS output for the two-way ANOVA. We're, as you can see here, I have the output that SPSS generated when we conducted the two-way ANOVA. Now, I usually like to begin by looking at the profile plot line graph, so I'm going to go ahead and scroll down and find that graph. I like this graph because it provides a good understanding of what the data looks like and whether or not we might expect to see a statistically significant interaction between our two independent variables, gender and type of program. It also provides us some information as to whether or not we might have a significant main effect. Note here that the lines are parallel. They don't overlap, they don't cross. That's it's not likely that we will find that we have a statistically significant interaction effect. However, it does look like there may be a type of program main effect and there may or may not be a gender main effect. Let's go ahead though and look at the tests of between subjects effect table as this is where we're gonna find our main results for our two-way ANOVA and be able to determine whether or not we do have statistical significance for our interaction effect as well as our two main effects. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll back up and find that table. Here we have the tests of between subjects effects table. Now we're not really that concerned with the first two rows of the table. Our first concern is really the type of program and gender row. Because in the significance column, we are going to be able, in this row, in the significance column, we are going to be able to determine whether or not we have a statistical significant interaction. So let's go ahead and take a look at this row and specifically at the SIG column, which contains the significance value for the interaction effect. Remember, if our interaction is statistically significant, we will have a p-value of less than 0.05. Here we see that the value in the SIG column is 0.592, which is more than 0.05, so this means that the interaction effect is not significant. Let's go ahead and move on and open a Word document here and look at how to use the information in this table uh, to report and explain these results. Here you can see that I've used ABC labels um, to label the output so that we can discuss the breakdown of the results and how to report it um, in specifically an APA format. Here we, uh, we, here's how we report in APA format. We first have the F and that's the F distribution or the F test. Next you'll notice we have a BC here and for the interaction effect I've reported this as 1 and 72. Um, here, that is the degrees of freedom uh, for 1 and 2, and they're labeled up here as B and C. Next, we, we need to report the p-value, or the probability value of obtaining the observed f-value if the null hypothesis is correct. And the p-value here is labeled as f. That's our significance column, so we would say uh, p is equal to point. 5.92. We also, let's go ahead, we skipped E here. I have the F statistic or the obtained F value labeled here as E and that is 0.298. So F equals 0.298 we see. Next we have partial eta squared and here that's labeled as G and that's our effect size. So we report partial eta squared. And then finally our observed power is labeled here as I and our observed power is 0, 0.0 actually not 2 but 3 again the importance of verifying what we have in our uh, output table is actually what we are reporting and so what we can say in our report is there is insufficient evidence to reject the interaction effect null hypothesis and again, I have an error here. Again, the importance of proofreading. Um, so there is insufficient evidence to reject this null hypothesis and that's based on these results here. So that's how you would take the information from the test of between subjects effects table from the uh, interaction row and report uh, the statistics and uh, also interpret those statistics or those results. Now, since we have 
an insignificant interaction effect, we are going to move on and determine the significance for each main effect. However, if there was a statistically significant interaction, we would not say there was insufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. We would actually interpret this to mean that the effect of the type of program on student sense of community depends on gender, or said in another way, the effect of the gender on sense of community depends on the type of program. And it's important to note also that if we did have a statistically significant interaction, reporting the main effects as are displayed here in this table in the type of program row, row and gender row would actually be misleading. So we would need to determine the differences between the gender at each level of, of the program and vice versa. And we would do this using simple main effects, which I will discuss in a follow-up tutorial. However, as I said, since we do not have a significant interaction effect, we move on to simply determining the significant main effect for both gender and type of program. And we can actually use this output table. There are other alternatives though, which again, I will discuss in a follow-up tutorial.